Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome to our That's No Moon base. This is the series of videos in which we are going to be creating this facility on the moon, right next to the Neil Armstrong Memorial. Today, in episode one, we have our beacon, our landing site, to mark this is where the base is going to be. Submitted by Devon. Thank you very much for the submission, and look at this. Look at it, it is just too good too good it looks pretty damn awesome when it's down on the moon so in order to see that let us go and put this down on the moon if you haven't seen episode zero episode zero which was the announcement of that's the moon base you should go watch it it's pretty much an overview of what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be doing it now i'm going to add this onto the forum because i've just thought of it now after watching this footage that i recorded a few minutes ago um, specifically 30 minutes ago, this is sped up to uh, two times speed. Hence the funny music in the background. Ah, it's so good. Um, yeah, this is sped up to two times speed, and um, as you can see here, we have the part, our communication, communications tower version 2, submitted by Devon. And I am building a launch stage to get this thing to the moon. Now, I know with this launch stage that I'm building now, I'm recreating, I know I can transport up to 40 mass units of payload onto the moon's surface. Now, it was very, very lucky because I didn't actually explicitly say this, but I'm going to now, so you better all pay attention. In order for your ship to be valid, this is a new rule, I'm going to add it to the forums, as I've said, you have to be able, it has to have its own landing part, so some sort of sky, sky crane attached to it, or in this case just laterally mounted engines, really easy to implement. It needs to have some sort of parts to land it, um, so I can't do the final stages of the landing. So literally I can't do the final touchdown. If you have anything that allows me to do the final touchdown with your part, then great, I'll use yours. It has to have that, and I need to be able to mount a 3 meter part underneath um, underneath the actual utility, so I can reuse the same launcher over and over again. That's what I'm trying to get at here. I don't have to design a new one for every single part. So yeah, we are building this. It's a bit different to what I usually build. It's um, it's The fuel order is a bit different because... Uh, we have our we have three pairs of tanks that we're dropping asparagus style, um, but the last pair, this one that we're currently working on now, actually has four tanks in total rather than three. There was room, and it actually does make sense to put more fuel in, in this stage here. So yeah, we did that, and it works really well. Um, currently, just doing all the wiring of struts, I should say. We're strutting everything together, trying to make it all really strong and stable, and. This entire mission went pretty well. I mean, there was one thing I had to redo, which is, you, you'll see in a moment, but um, other than that, it was extremely easy. You can see there are laterally mounted boosters on the main section of this, and um, use that for the final stages of landing, and it all pulls off rather nicely. Let us put some big struts on the side here. Nice and bright red struts there. And that's pretty much it, I think. <laughs> of course, I'm missing one. Uh, missing half of my vital ingredient. I just need to sort out the staging currently. So I'm finding which pairs uh, go to which set of tanks. Because unlike how I've been doing it in previous episodes, I actually used six times symmetry and then went into the staging manually, like I'm doing right now, or I've just finished. Went manually into the staging and sorted out. Um, you know, and separated them all into their pairs. Whereas what I used to do was to actually build them in pairs. Um, doing it in pairs has advantages that you can build it a bit quicker. Um, although, kind of, you can do the staging certainly quicker, because it's already sorted into pairs. But doing it, like with six times symmetry, you can strut everything together much quicker. You can just, you know, put a strut from one tank, one tank to another, and bam, everything strutted together. Let's launch this. Let's launch this. The proportion is way out. Take a look at this. It's the massive beacon, which looks absolutely awesome, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Massive beacon there is about the size of the entire rocket. <laughs> 
which is which is never never good if you're in a real space agency and your payload is the size of the rocket that's launching it. Mm -hmm. Either you're working on some very specialized task or you're doing something wrong. Oh yeah, and the lights are very good. Although there is a problem with the lights that um we'll go over later. Launch! We'll launch this sucker and pro promptly go back this way. What on earth is going on? Okay, well, that means we've done some of the fuel lines a bit differently. This is why I did the pairs, because getting the fuel set up was mo much easier. You can see I've actually only done the fuel lines, get down here, only done the fuel lines on one half. Yeah, well, one half of the solution. Um, because I was so used to it doing it in pairs automatically that I didn't think I had to do it manually for the entire ship. So it takes a little longer to do this bit, but at the end of the day, it's two fuel lines extra. It's not a problem whatsoever. Let us launch, and this time, this time will be successful. I'm doing post-commentary again. It's been a very long time since I've done commentary in this format. Actually, I've never done commentary in this exact format. Dual monitors, baby. Dual monitors. So good. Um, I'm watching Vegas on one screen and the preview window in that, which will not lag, unlike Camtasia Studio 7, which I used to use on my old laptop. Drop that first pair. Camtasia Studio 7 lagged the preview window. It, it didn't buffer beforehand, so it was trying to render out the preview at the same time as playing the video, and as a result it lagged if the file was too big. Um, obviously 720p is fairly big. It's not 1080p which may be coming to the channel at some point. Um, I would like to do some 1080p videos just as a test more than anything. I don't really think that I need to upload 1080p, but recently I've been downloading videos overnight in the free period of internet I get because we, um, we have limited bandwidth, not unlimited. So I've been recently downloading them overnight to get them for free, and I've been downloading in 1080p. Um, it's pretty nice. I do like watching in 1080p now, but... Uh, I don't think I have the bandwidth to stream 1080p, so it's I'm not going to be uploading 1080p videos regularly. But it would be nice to do a few, as I've said. I'm um, getting this thing higher and higher. Um, higher, higher. I don't know what that pronun pronunciation was. God, nearly said pronunciation as well. Um, if, if I didn't turn over exactly 10 kilometers, it's because this payload is rather large and this whole ship is rather heavy and I prefer to turn over at more like 12 or 15 kilometers for this because it makes it easier to um, get out of the atmosphere quicker so I don't have to worry about the parts bouncing against each other. Also because I need to release the pairs um, whilst I'm going in a, di in a straight direction. I can't afford to be turning whilst I release a pair, otherwise it might explode horribly. So don't shout at me for turning over too late, all those people who already have. I don't even know if I did in this, I seem to remember I did. But look at that view. Let's forget about the Scott Manley telling people we have to turn over at 10km. Um, and people taking that too literally. <laughs> Certainly taking it too close to heart. No, got nothing against Scott, just his fans seem to think that I don't watch his videos. Um, moving on, bit of a topic. Uh, moving on. Yes, this thing, it looks so good. Just every angle, it looks pretty damn awesome, which is why I chose it. It was actually the second post, um, which isn't technically true. It was the second post on the forum thread, which is in the description if you want to submit your own utilities for the That's No Moon base. It was the second post, but this is his revision, so he went back and edited his post. Oh yeah, message to everyone using the forum. You can edit posts. Who would have guessed? Yeah. So you don't need to post a new post every single time. Um, every single time you want to change something. You can edit your last post. Uh, I don't know if you're trying to bump yourself or not, but you can edit your last post, and that would be preferable. Because, you know, we don't want one person taking up millions of post space by just posting, Oh, I forgot this. Oh, I forgot this. Oh, I forgot this. Yeah. Uh, we're here, and I'm surprised how much fuel I have left. This thing does only weigh 17-something mass units. Being version, version, two, version, being version 2, it does weigh slightly more than the original did. Separate the big tank and push away with our nuclear engines, or try to. I mean, for some reason, I think, I think um, because we, we were using a 3 meter decoupler, and those nuclear engines collision mesh is fairly wide, so I think it was kind of pinching the, uh, the 3 meter decoupler almost. But um, uh, as I was saying, yeah, this, this only weighs 17 mass units. 
I don't know, that's not going to be kilograms, is it? It's going to be tons, 17, 17 tons. Um, so it's actually surprisingly light, considering this lander can get something to the moon that weighs 40 mass units. So yeah, we arrived here with plenty of fuel to spare, absolutely tons of the stuff, which is good because slowing down from this speed um, with only two nuclear engines for propulsion can be quite a lengthy process. But yeah, um, I was going to say something. It was something, something that I briefly thought of. Look at that. Look at it. It's so good. The reason this one got chosen was because it was, A, it just looks amazing, obviously, and B, it's on the scale that I was looking for. The first post onto the forum, within like 10 minutes of me posting the actual thread without even talking about it, which is pretty amazing, was from a guy called Level Lord, and I'm actually going to be using his utility later. Mr. Level Lord, I am going to be using your your beacon. It was too small, the original one was, and I know later on you posted um, a different version with a sky crane, uh, but you weren't sure whether I wanted that sky, sky crane or not. I don't think I'll be using that because I just prefer the look of Devon's. Well, I'm don't, I don't think I'm going to be using it, I'm not using it. Look at this video. But I'm going to be using the first post because you have introduced something that is another rule I'm going to set into this show. Um, just swapping to the ISS in order to warp round quickly. Yes, the International Subscriber Space Station is still here. We're using it for warping purposes to speed time up where the game wouldn't allow us to from the perspective of the ship. Um, but yes, Level Lord, you've given us a standardised system. Thank you God so much. <laughs> that was what I was missing. I, like, I sat down one evening and I thought, okay, I'm going to plan out this show. What do I need? I missed out standardising. Yeah, all docking ports, from now on, I feel like I'm, you know, listing down rules. All docking ports shall be the big ones, not junior docking ports. We're all going to be using, for every utility, you need to use the big docking ports, right? Standardising, so everything is compatible with everything else. More importantly, rovers have to be, or those docking ports, have to be a certain height off the ground. And that height is set by a one metre fuel tank. So you can use the uh, structural fuselage for that, actually. You can use the aero, the you know, the liquid fuel only tank, or you can use a standard um, 400 something. Uh, they probably changed the levels on them now, but you know, the standard one meter fuel tank. And the height which the decoupler needs to be off the ground is that rover wheels on the side. So if you imagine this standard, the medium sized rover wheels, directly off the side on that, how it seems natural. Whatever height the docking port is, when it's on the front of that, is exactly how high off the ground the docking port needs to be. It's extremely hard for me to describe this using only my voice, so that's why I've got something on the screen right now, um, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, um, that's exactly how we're going to be doing things. If anyone has any more suggestions for standardising, um, then go post your utility on on the uh, the thread, link in the description, and you need to um, post just, at the end of your post, just talk about how you think we should standardise everything, because everything needs to be compatible. Not everything is going to be docked together, because I'm going to, I mean, I've got massive plans for this, it's so good, and as we come in over the landing site, thankfully marked out by our uh, Kerbal who was sitting there in the announcement video, but um, as we come near the landing site, we can see there's so much space and so much flat ground and I'm thinking like massive hangars that we can park buggies and exploration rovers in, you know, big things. And seeing as the limit is mass, drag, mm, drag can come into it I suppose, but um, the limit only is really mass and you can use pretty lightweight parts, those panels hardly weigh anything for making hangars. Hell, you can use wing connectors, although launching them into the atmosphere might be a bit hard. But yeah, we've got big plans for this, as we detach that nuclear stage and it explodes. And yes, there's the Neil Armstrong Memorial. And we're not going to land on top of it, or near it. No, we are going to land near it. We're going to land about over here, I think. Just over here, sounds good. But um, yeah, uh, if you have any ideas for standardization, if you have any ideas for parts you want to post, if you have any utilities that fit the construction brief laid out on the forum, go to the forum, read the rules, and submit them. And we have touched down on the moon with our communications tower version 2, submitted by Devon. This looks so good. Now, there was that one problem that I mentioned 
which is um, there are solar panels, so there is energy generation, which is nice, but there's no generators. And unfortunately, the solar panel, there isn't enough battery capacity to hold enough to power the lights overnight. So, yeah, it would be nice if we could have some generators on this, but it's a bit late for that now. Um, oh well, everything's going to have its flaws, and it's as flaws go, it's a very, very small one. But that's it. That's the end of this video. I think we can all agree this was a great start, and if we can get everything looking this good as we open up the antennas, if we can get everything looking this good, then the entire base is going to be a massive, resounding success. So, go submit your utilities at the forum thread, link is in the description. If you liked the video, please do like the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you all next time.